So I'm here today with Kevin from Jet Shades, and today we're gonna to go for a flight in this beautiful um, SR22 GT3 Turbo. It's my first time in a series, so I'm pretty excited for this. Well, Kevin is the owner of Jet Shades. You may have seen them in my airplane, so he doesn't know this, but while he's in there, when we're in flight, I'm gonna see if I can hit him up and get him to pitch in a uh, set of Jet Shades for my giveaway. Cirrus. So jealous. This actually is a new airplane for him. He uh, is a former owner of a beautiful Eclipse that we were supposed to do a video together, but unfortunately timing just did not work out. Anyway, so um, we're going to be going VFR to St. Augustine. The day is Look absolutely it. beautiful. Get it out here. And I mean, how do you how do you not go VFR on a day like today? And the fact is, is that uh, since it's his airplane, I hope sometime in between there, I want to steal some uh, some stick time. And I don't know, it's just nice to have the flexibility of, uh, what, uh-huh, uh, 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 <laughs> let me turn off your headset. <laughs> We're ready to go at four. Three pound pounder for Buck 170. So does this uh, Allegiant Airline takes off? I wonder if let us out front. Away we go. Here. November two, Mike Tango, runway four, you're clear for takeoff. Runway four, clear for takeoff, two, Mike Tango. No delay on the roll, please. No delay. On the roll, four, two, Mike Tango. Boost pumps on, makes just full, 550. All right, you're clear, right? I see the airplane coming in that he wants us to get out of the way. Yeah, or? we'll be right up there. Yeah, we're we'll plenty. Full power. Air, sea, air, speed. Speed's alive. Number two, Julia Pop, runway four, clear to land. Clear to land, runway four, clear to the pump. Right, brother. Right, uh. Coming up on 400, up come the flaps. Caps are available, lap screen, and get up a little more, begin our turn. Start turning on course. We'll get it to Lakeland, direct, enter, enter. Boom, there it is. We'll nav, autopilot, vertical speed. Number two, Mike Tango, contact Fort Myers departure. Oh, departure, good day, to Mike Tango. Fort Myers departure, series 612, Mike Tango, 1,600, climbing 7,500. Number 612, Mike Tango, Fort Myers departure, radar contact, say altitude, climbing two. Climbing to 7,500 for two Mike Tango. Right there. All right, very good. We're off, we're fine. And uh, we should be able to get above that layer. Oh, yeah. And then uh, I've got the uh, Stratus telling us all our traffic right here. Go Sierra, maintain so beyond that, zero, zero, for one. VFR, we can come up here and see zero, zero, who's flying one. Five, six, nine, go Sierra. There's anybody in our way. Anybody going, we got to dodge. <laughs> and, a, and a little flight following helps. And the little flight following is always safer. And I haven't done VFR flight following in ages, so this is... Uh, <laughs> well, it's nice, because some airports like uh, Buna Gorda will allow you to request it from their grounds, and other airports, uh, yeah. like when you depart from St. Augustine, uh, they won't give it to you. You'll have to pick it up in, in the air. Yeah. You can ask them for it, but typically, or historically, I should say, they've uh, always turned me down and said I had to get it in the air. So it's nice when you have a, a tower that uh, is cooperative and, and willing to you know, yeah. help you out and do some work for you. So my, uh, my, I don't remember my history in the, in the flying world, but I was, um, it was uh, 2010, you know. Here's to Mike Tango, contact Miami Center, 134.55 today. 134.55 today to Mike Tango. Uh, in 2010, you know, I'd never flown a plane, never anything. And uh, I was driven by uh, the local airport that had gone through by many times up in Rhode Island. The sign said, like, learn to fly here, you know. And I said, oh, I just want to do that. I thought to myself, well, you're single, kids are all grown up, why don't you go do it? And at that moment, I put my blinker on, and told, I just went in. I mean, it was a totally unplanned, I just went in. I said, all right, I'll go do it. I just went in that day. 
and they set me up. I ran two to the kilo and, uh, after uh, Lakeland from Big 7 across the city. They set All me right, up Lakeland, to go fly. And, uh, you know, I started flying the Cessna around and quickly said, oh, I took it on a business trip with the instructor. And uh, I said, oh, I got to do something else. So I got this sort of serious in a trade show. And I was like, oh, that might be more my style. So I bought an SR-22 normally aspirated, hired the instructor out of the flight school, had him come work for my company, and we flew all over the country as a student. And then I learned, you know, I was scared to death of the radios, and turbulence wasn't my friend either. It was a really good experience. I flew 1,200 hours in the Cirrus. Oh, I mean, we went, we went Rhode Island to California and, and back. <laughs> so that was quite the experience, you know. We flew to Houston a few times. I had business meetings in Houston. I said, oh, I'll just take the Cirrus and take two days to get there, you know. Miami, this is Oscar, November 4th, 3-3, 5-4, me at 6,300, this is 2,500. Yeah, there's nothing like flying in a small airplane at your own schedule. Yeah, and especially, you know, there you go, you got an air conditioning. Oscar, November 4th, 3-3, 5-4, me at 6,200, this is 2,500. Yeah, I mean, the avionics are fantastic. Oh, yeah. Taking in. Yeah, I'm not a round gauge guy, sorry. Me and six packs don't get along. Unfortunately, and, I am, uh, one day I hope to aspire to, uh, at four miles, to be all glass. Uh, so then you made a transition made a from a Cirrus <laughs> to an Eclipse jet. jet. I did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I couldn't resist it. I wanted something to go for my business, and uh, I got a great price on an Eclipse jet, and I said, oh, I'll get a jet rating. Funny thing was, my friends asked me, you bought a jet, and you can't even fly it? <laughs> what happens if you can't fly it? And I was like, oh, I don't think about that. I'm just going to go learn to fly it, you know, like, what do you mean? I can't fly it. I'll get trained, you know. And uh, yeah, it's a really good train. 26.8, And, you know, I find personally, for me, like, I'm, you know, I'm, my degree is in engineering mechanical, and I'm sure. very mechanically orientated. So understanding the systems of an aircraft and what's going on behind the scenes, um, it, to me, it's really important. And, and it's really, I'm really happy that I can understand the systems of what's going on in the aircraft. Thank God, I had a really good instructor in the Eclipse. He, he taught techniques, and uh, God, I ended up having like 800 solo hours in an Eclipse jet. Nice. <laughs> 800, you know, 1,200 altogether, but 800 were like solo, you know. Made me a proficient, proficient pilot. <laughs> had a few, uh, few, few, few quick descents I had to do. Which will be a story actually for, for next time we go flying. We'll, we'll save that story. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Some of your one for sky few your emergencies you actually had in the eclipse, but yeah, you're right. I mean, you know, flying, flying okay. a, nine, two, two, a jet will definitely um, one, three, five, give five, you some five. techniques that aren't necessarily five, five, taught in the GA one, world two, that do translate. Now, when you went from the eclipse back to the Cirrus, um, what was that transition like for you? Well, you know, I, I like to think once in a while I'm a smart guy, <laughs> so I hired a Cirrus instructor to take me back up, <laughs> even though I had 1,200 hours in my. <laughs> I went right back to Sierra and said, you know, I haven't flown one of these in like four years. I'm not, I don't have an ego to say I'm going to do it either. <laughs> Check your ego at the door. Yeah, so I went and I went up a couple of days and uh, did got really good at uh, not only landing, but the techniques of the discipline again and, uh, you know, learning to manage the engine. And uh, because in Florida, you know, you can fly around at three or 4,000 feet safely, but you might not want to be beating the heck out of your engine and the, setting up the mixture just right so you get a nice, easy, relaxed flight rather than killing it at that altitude. And I learned all that stuff from the Sears instructor. Um, it was really good. They, they did a really good job of, you know, and again, I had to, to take that jet ego away from me and say, well, you know, you're not, you're not, you're not doing that anymore. You know, you're just going to, um, you know, learn to go back to the Cirrus. And eventually, the, you know, the old Cirrus habits uh, came back, so that was good. But no, I got, went, before I got this thing, first thing I did is wrong here in the Cirrus instructor, there's no way I'm jumping in this thing to try to say I can do it. So did you find that, um, that it was more difficult learn, uh, getting back into the swing of things in the Cirrus coming from a jet? You know, yeah, it, it was, because when you're, when you're new to flying, you know, yeah, I, I was a sponge. Like, I know nothing, so teach me. And, and so they teach you something, I'd ask questions, and I would just learn. But when I came from back from the jet, and the, of course the, the Eclipse jet did not have Garmin. It had its own uh, system that they put in, an INS system, and um, it's a lot different. Now, it's a good system, though, in the Eclipse jet. It's just different systems, like a Macintosh versus a PC. You know, right. it's a good system. Because I'd flown the jet, and I've been flying now for about 2,000 hours, you kind of think you know some stuff about flying, <laughs> and you realize you've got to, like, not 
not think that way. You know, you got to go back to the, oh, I don't know, not think about flying this plane. And it is a different type of flying. It was probably a little bit more challenging. The good thing was the stick and rudder stuff was there. So that wasn't the issue, but it was the type of flying that I was now going to do was much different. And after a lot of four years in the jet and a lot of solo, solo flying and used to doing, you know, you're doing all the flight planning, it's you up in the uh, plane by yourself, you know, you, you, you really have to be on your game and be disciplined in the chat. So by the way, when, when, when did you start flying? How long did you start flying? So I started flying in the early 90s. I knew in elementary school that I wanted to be a pilot. I knew my entire life I wanted to be a pilot. I wanted to go in the Air Force and I wanted to fly up with the Air Force. That was always my goal and my dream. Um, long story short, right out of high school, I ended up um, going to uh, Tamiami Airport, which is now uh, called Miami Executive. And I ended up doing my flight training out of uh, out of there, and that was in the uh, early 90s. Wow! And uh, and then I just you know over time built up my my ratings, and uh, it just it's always been my drug. I wanted to do it for a full time career it was my goal and dream. Like I said, the Air Force, the Line Yards. Um, when I was of age to make my career decision, my then girlfriend, now ex wife, um, didn't want me to be a pilot. She was afraid I'd be away too much and what have you. So uh, I said, well, as long as, I can, uh, can, as long as I can afford to fly, then, then I'll be okay with it. And, uh, and that kind of worked for a while. But to you know, any, any young pilots that are watching, any, anyone who's at that age where they've got to make a decision, um, I would totally advise them to pursue your dream. You live once, but otherwise you'll become a 40-year-old man like myself and with a whole lot of, you know, what if, what if, what if. And uh, so I tell you, I wouldn't change your dream no matter what. Sure. So, um, but yeah, so, you know, so now I'm fortunate, you know, I fly around my Baron. I get the, you know, I, now I do these videos. Um, I do, which I just announced to uh, my, my viewers, um, but I do do some, um, some 135 flying, I, you know, I swing it, I get my citation, you know, my jet time, my turbine time, Nice. and um, so I kind of, I'm still living my dream, yeah. um, or, you know, living the dream, uh, it wasn't my original dream, but it's still, I'm, you know, I'm blessed, I, nice. yeah. life is amazing, I'm like, anytime you burn jet fuel, you're, you're happy, and honestly, <laughs> and for people who never will, burning ab gas, like, I tell you what, I don't care if you're flying an ultralight, or you're flying a 747. Yeah. Yeah. Flying is flying, and only a small percentage of the world ever gets to experience that. Yeah. So, no matter what, you are, you're blessed to, to be able to do it. Absolutely. Well, so we're sitting here, like, I keep turning the air down, because, oh, yeah. <laughs> because I'm getting cold, <laughs> which is really nice because you have AC, but um, your window is a little darker than, than most serious windows. Yeah. And that's because you got these these jet chase. So I keep talking about um, that you are um, a company called Jet Chase. Yeah. And so for those who aren't familiar with it or haven't seen it in, in the Baron, um, these inserts that you're seeing around us and, and up here, actually making this cold in here, um, is uh, is your product? Is your is your jet shades? So now you they're they're custom fit for the plane. What, what yeah. exactly? How does this work? Well, you know. I was dying in that eclipse in Florida, so I, like every product, put stuff in the windows. And one day I said, there's got to be a better way. And uh, I thought of putting in an insert. So I went and I made one, and I went to a car company, and they put some film on uh, They said, no, they said, we won't put film on that. It's plastic. It'll curl up. It won't stick. You can't do that. It has to be glass. I'm like, I can't put glass in my cockpit, blah, blah, blah. And I argued with the guy, and he said, I'm not going to do it. So I gave him 100 bucks and said it's a prototype, go ahead. <laughs> he goes, well, it's going to last about a week, and it only lasted about a week. Yeah, I mean, the film was pretty good. But for that one week, I had the coolest cockpit. <laughs> and I had the dark ones, you know, it was really cool. So I went on a mission oh, about a year and a half ago to say i got to find a way to do this. So the net result is this thing called Judge Shades, which is uh, it's an optical quality polycarbonate. I mean, look at the visibility for this thing. Right? I mean, it's not, and that was our intent. We really uh, wanted, I really wanted a high quality of the product that you can really see through the yes. else. Now, it wasn't for us, it might be up to the cone traffic. Um, so it, it ends up, what I came up with is um, this optical quality polycarbonate, which I found a way, working with some really good engineers at a supplying company to, to develop these substrates that would allow us to uh, you know, coat the polycarbonate and adjust it. It's not 
Just two down. These things are, are really down. good. They block the first of all, 99.9% UV. So UV is also, you know, a big challenge in aircraft, any aircraft. You know, but it's about 99% of it, 79% heat for it, heat. And then uh, solar gear, let me look at, look at the, uh, we're in the shade, look at our instruments, you know, the, the blocks clear, keeps the iPad from uh, heating up. But basically, they're removable. And so, in flight, you know, we could take them out, and they're, you know, ooh, look how bright they get, and then you just push them back in. And yeah. we did actually- We'll leave them in. Oh, yeah, we'll leave them in. We actually did go to the FAA and, and got them uh, approved, PMA, for the uh, lift jet. But they said, well, they're removable. There's no screws, Velcros, nothing. They're not attached to the aircraft. The pilot can put them in, remove them during flight. So, um, so we went forward and started building up for all different models. So, like the, the Cirrus models, yeah, they're pretty good. We can get a G5 and G6 off the shelf. You just pop them in your Cirrus. This windshield uh, guard, which is brand new, by the way, um, you can just pop that in. Now, that should fit all your Cirruses. And there's one for the skylight in the back. And the goal was to block the heat coming into the plane. And therefore, your air conditioning, you know, works much more effectively because it doesn't have to overcome hot air in the plane. I'm sorry, what'd you say? Air conditioning? What is that? Yeah, yeah. And if you don't have air conditioning, it'll leave you help. But if you if you don't have air conditioning, and you have one of those coolers that does it. It'll make that work a lot better too. So, um, as you notice, it's really comfortable right now. Uh, oh, I'm extremely comfortable. I, I you're, you're you're making me a little envious. Yeah. I'm getting a little plain envy here. I will tell you one thing that um, I really like, and it, it just as a pilot, is this thing. This this headband. I came up with that, and finally, this is the final prototype. It's going to go to the market in about two, three weeks. Um, that, to me, is a must-have because when you fly and you get the sun from up top, you get that glare. I mean, I found myself getting headaches at the end of the flight, stuff like that, because your eyes were always straining, and right. squinting. squinting and everything like that. Now, you can see right through this. It's a clear day, so you can see right through that. It's just a very dark... And the technical side of these products, like I said, I'm an engineer, is, is really interesting because, first of all, they said you can't coat any kind of plastic, it won't work. We, we've overcome that. But there's several, several coatings, it's not just one. One is meant to reflect heat. The other one is meant to absorb heat. So we have this double action happening where the first uh, solar energy gets reflected back and the second one gets absorbed. So it's a really, yeah, I mean, if in the, inside the cockpit, we've got temperature reduction, so like sitting on the ground. So over 20 degrees, like 25 degrees, you know, versus uh, with it and without it. So it's really, uh, I, I was really happy with how the product uh, turned out, you know. Wow. So you know, um, on, on BaronPilot.net, which is my, my website, I have this year-long giveaway where every month I'm giving away free products. Oh, um, what, you, what, what am I getting? <laughs> Well, if you go on to uh, underbearingbody.net and you uh, register, you can actually register and get multiple entries. If you click on the things that you see and you refer someone, you can get more entries as well. There's all kinds of good stuff on there. Rather than talking about what you can win, you know, I would love to, to offer to my, my viewers a set of jet shades to add to that, that monthly giveaway. I, I thought you were going to give me something for giving you a ride. <laughs> Wait, you mean you were... <laughs> uh, so you, a jet of shade, say it's like a raffle prize for your uh, yeah. If, if, you know, if 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 you don't mind, I don't mean to put you on the spot here. And, 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 sure he doesn't mind. and if you say, <laughs> if you say no, I'll, I'll edit it out. <laughs> so no one will know that you're uh, a you know thing. <laughs> you said it, not me. Are you gonna autograph them? <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to see my autograph. <laughs> the Baron Pilot Edition. <laughs> But, uh, yeah. <laughs> but so not to put you on the spot. Uh oh. <laughs> but I want to know is, yeah. will you donate a set? Oh, yes, I'll donate a set. Of course I will. Fun. I'd love you, you know, your, your, somebody in your uh, following to have a set of these. So no, that's awesome. I mean, I, I, I really didn't mean to put you on the spot like that. That's right. It's all good. Uh, you know, sorry. <laughs> But you are buying lunch when we get to St. Augustine, right? I'll buy lunch. All right. so. <laughs> I'll buy lunch so that way my viewers can get something for free. <laughs> Wait a minute, what's wrong with this? <laughs> so how this isn't working out right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. just let us know what model plane it is. We'll have to, uh, you know, go give them a gift certificate or something, whatever, right. you, whatever, however you do it. So, and then for those who don't win, they can go to uh, jetshades.com. Yeah, jetshades.com will get it. And uh, so, for those who don't win, go to jetshades.com. And if you want to order your own set, there'll be a link in the description uh, down below. And, uh, or just go to uh, baronpilot.net. Uh, and I actually did a little blog on, on your jet shade and my airplane. 
So in fact, if I remember correctly, there actually might be a little coupon code. Uh-oh, here we go. <laughs> I think I remember that when I, when I first launched them. So you know, somebody called me the other day asking about that. Did they? Yeah. They said, is that verified $50 coupon too good? And I'm like, oh, no. I <laughs> sure. Yeah, I bought it. <laughs> Vince McChristopher, yeah, the wires. Yeah. Well, being that this is a mutual relationship, right? So um, you're giving to my viewers, yeah, and, sure. and my viewers are giving back to you. Um, I think my viewers want to see me do a little hand flying, a little little hand stick flying with uh, with the series because yeah, well, so, far. so far you only you've been flying. Then. Okay, there he goes. Uh oh, uh -oh. it's warning everybody. <laughs> it's like hey. Oh, I mean, we're VFR, so if you want to try 10, 20, we turn. Yeah, I will. Just get to get a little feel for the straight level deal here. So it's interesting. So it's definitely a little bit different feel, but it's almost a little more er oh. ergonomic yeah. to, to the way your hand normally sits. This you may be feeling a force left to right right now because when the autopilot's on, it trims it. And then when you take it off, so if you feel it has the side to side trim, if you feel any resistance left to right, yeah, just hit the trim a little. There you go. You, you should feel no force when you're uh, flying. It's always nice having the attitude indicator all the way over here. <laughs> uh, well, I'm going to let you know if you get a bad attitude, don't worry. <laughs> oh, I have a bad attitude. <laughs> just ask people that know me. Yeah. <laughs> I just get a little feel here. I do a little bit of a little bank. And you know, the, you're familiar with the triangle at the bottom of your rudder. It's, you know, the ball. So the bottom of that, you want to keep underneath the pyramid. One three three point three two yeah. One one three point three two three two one three three point three two. Three three point three two. Coast car one seven one two turn right heading is zero seven zero traffic. Zero seven zero one seven one two. Alright now I'm getting noise. <laughs> Air center arrow three seven seven zero tango. Arrow three seven seven zero tango, give me just a second. Uh, that's a nice little feel. You know, it's definitely, um, I can see it takes some getting used to. Yeah. Um, mainly because in the turn, in the turn, it's a little more, say, wrist action. Oh, yeah. Then, then actually churning arm action. Exactly. So, um, that's one difference I, I notice. But I can see how, you know, a little bit of time, a little bit of experience. This it's very reactive. Yeah, I really could get used to this. This is good stuff here. So, uh, so we're currently uh, level and cruise at 7,500 feet. We have a outside air temperature. Where's your outside air temperature here? Seven degrees. It's seven degrees Celsius. We have an indicated airspeed of about 156 knots, and we have a ground speed currently of 178 knots. Yeah, Cirrus usually trues out about. Uh, uh, this is the SR22 turbo. And so it'll true out right around uh, 175 or so. It's pretty good. And we're indicating 175, 176 right now. Yeah. And you consistently get that. And then of course the winds will give you plus or minus the winds will give you ground speed. So um, moves later on for a single engine. Oh yeah. The field's actually directly in front of us. You probably can't see it right now. Nice. But it is in front of us. Is it over the? Yeah, over the river? it's basically straight straight in front of us. Essentially, yeah, it's all, it's, it's right on, on that the, brown field, that brown spot. No, no, no it's all the way, uh, it's just this side of the ocean. Oh, so, it's close. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's basically on the edge of the ocean. Oh, the ocean, I'm looking at the intercoastal. Yeah, yeah, not the intercoastal, the ocean. Oh, that's a lot of difference in the intercoastal up here then. Yeah, this is right here in front of us is, is the St. John's River, ah. um, which is, as you can see here on the map, it's a nice big river that goes yeah. all the way through uh, Jacksonville. But that's, oh, that's not the intercoastal then. No, that's not the intercoastal. Uh, okay. I believe the St. John's does meet the intercoastal, but it's not the intercoastal. Okay. Approach 0612 Mike Tango has uh, St. Augustine's place. 0612 Mike Tango, roger that contact, St. Augustine Tower, we'll see you. Over to the tower, thanks, uh, to Mike Tango. St. Augustine Tower, 0612 Mike Tango, about uh, 12 miles to the west, and we're inbound for a full stop with hotel. 0612 Mike Tango, St. Augustine Tower, report midfield left traffic, we're in a 31. Okay, report a midfield, uh, left, uh, left downwind, runway 3-1, 2 my tank. 2 my tank, your traps at 11 o'clock. 11, uh, 30 coming up near 12 o'clock at 2 miles downwind, Piper just about turn base, begin descent, advise when you see 
Uh, he's inside, just like now. He had to send follow the Piper. He's going to do a touch and go. You're number two, we're on a three one, go to land. Okay, well, it's number two, follow the Piper, clear to land, just like now. Five hundred. Go as slow as I can. Yep. Oh, be gone. Oh, good. St. Augustine Tower, five zero seven thirty six. That's now thirteen miles no, to the south along the shoreline at one thousand five hundred. <laughs> with information, well, hotel. Get him on the runway. Right right five zero seven thirty six. St. Augustine Tower, right down, please. Five zero seven thirty six. Right down. Ten August in town, nine two whiskey Romeo is ten to the south inbound post stop. Nine two whiskey Romeo, South Saint Tower, Roger, you said hotel. I got a tell nine two whiskey. Three whiskey Romeo, thanks. Turn right fifteen degrees for left base for a three one continue. Left base for three one nine two whiskey Romeo, fifteen degrees to the right. Fire seven thirty six, thanks. Continue shoreline, expect runway three one. Expecting runway three one along the shoreline. Fire zero seven thirty six. Fire five thirty one, appreciate it approved. Have a good day. Frequency change approved. Are we getting fuel or no fuel? Fuel or no fuel? Flight there at 751 at Bravo 6, holding short of runway 31, ready for departure. Number 2, Mike Tango, any left turn you can use runway 20 there or Bravo 2, hold short of the parallel taxiway Bravo, then contact ground, please. Okay, okay. Stocking ground, there is 612, Mike Tango cleared, 31 at 20 and Bravo for self service fuel. 612 Mike Tango, smashing down, turn left on Bravo, cross runway 6 to self serve. Left on Bravo, cross 6 to self serve for uh, 2 Mike Tango. Well, that was a good fight. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that flight. A little action at the end. It was a lot of fun. A little, uh, got some hand flying in. We talked about your jet shades, and uh, we, got, we got you to commit to. Uh, you oh, saw it here, yeah, folks. Of course, yes. We got jet shades is now going to be part of that giveaway, so go to barrenpilot.net to, uh, to register for the giveaway. Yeah. You are clear right? Clear right, clear left. And, and clear across. Hey, don't forget that nice crosswind landing. That's my first one yeah. in this thing. That, you did a nice landing there. <laughs> <laughs> you did a nice landing there. So if you guys enjoyed that video, be sure to uh, hit that, that thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Um, thanks for coming along. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for taking us along.